the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is our hope and our salvation. Let us praise the Lord. You know that we protect us from our sins and crucify him. He loves us too. Let us remember our salvation and glorify the Lord who forgave us. But let us still protect some to God that shows the demon today. Let our voice be raised in song and praise for all who would hear. Let us be the name of the Lord. Let us remain standing in our first hymn is number 401, the church is one foundation.
Okay, thank you. Do we have any uh, choice and concerns? Uh, one thing to remember, uh, it's in the bulletin, but uh, the family of Harold Hull, that's Daryl Hull's brother, passed away this week. Uh, anyone else? Newsletter deadline. Okay, newsletter deadline is Tuesday. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, Leanne, keep her in your prayers. She uh, is struggling with her EMS and is not here today uh, because of uh, some problems with that. Let us then go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this time together and for the fact that you've been made in your image. Help us, oh God, as we continue to serve you to do it as best as we're able. Help us to focus not upon our own self, but upon you, O oh God. There are many ways that we fall short of your glory. We do not live as we should, yet in these times you lift us up. You strengthen us. You help us. Help us continue to focus on you, O oh God, and your plans and purposes for us. We ask that as we are gathered in your house, that you would be with your people. Oh God, you are a source of strength in challenging times. There are many times that we need a Savior, that we need for you to admit to us, we need you to encircle us with your loving arms to help us as you would have us to go. We ask, O oh God, that you would continue to bless your people always. Be with the sick. Be with the hurting. Be with those who need your strength. Help them this day. O oh God, strengthen us and remind us that you are in control. And for that, we are thankful and grateful. And now we praise Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And we give us our Stickers. 
and you would have a book and it would have all different kind of stickers. Sometimes you would have a sticker that you'd scratch and it would smell like something. Or if you had a sticker that looked like it was 3D, like it was coming out at you, that was like the cool stickers. And you were really excited to show your friends these stickers. If you lost one of these things, it would make you very sad. And you would go, oh, I gotta tear up my whole room because I've gotta find what I'm looking for, right? So that made you sad, just like if you lost something, it would make you sad. Well, do you know that their shepherds have sheep? And in the Bible, it tells us that if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one wanders off, that the shepherd will leave the 99 to go find the one. He will go find the one. He will be so excited, he'll put it on his shoulders, and he'll carry it back. And he will tell all of his friends and neighbors, my sheep, I have found it. And he's so excited. Do you know Jesus is like that to us? He can have 99 people who absolutely love him and praise his name, but then he can have one who doesn't know him. And then he, someone shows them Christ, and he gets so excited. He's more excited about the one person that he saved than he is about the 99 who haven't sinned. So that's how we should think that just because it's just us doesn't mean that God doesn't think of us. He takes care of each and every one of us. And that we're all important. Even the ones that are lost are important. So Robin Caskey got you guys all stickers. And I know two people, Lola May and Kiever, will like these. They're Star Wars stickers. So if you decide that you want to start you a um, sticker book, and we do have children's church.
Our first scripture today comes from Acts, the fourth chapter, the fifth through the twelfth verses. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. And Ananias, the high priest, was there. And so was Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other high priest family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called into count today for an act of kindness showed to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then you know this, and you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. That is, this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind which we must be saved. Sanctify us through your word. Your word is truth, O Lord. Please join with me now and let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only God, the Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious of was crucified and buried in the earth, and descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sit on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the next to come to judge the wicked and the dead. I believe in the Lord Jesus, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We've been blessed with many good and wonderful gifts. Let us return a portion of those gifts to Almighty God.
church, for your kingdom upon this earth, that more things may happen for your glory and in your name. Amen. Our gospel lesson comes from St. John's Gospel, the 10th chapter, the 11th through the 18th verses. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep knows me, just as the Father knows me. I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down by my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This is my command I received from my Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Often when we think of the shepherd, we conjure up images in our minds, maybe images of, 
of Jesus, maybe of, of King David. In fact, um, in Samuel, the book of Samuel, when it talks about David, it, um, it, it says he's the youngest of his family. But yet the descriptions of David are, are different and doesn't seem to be quite congruent with what often we picture in our minds. Because there is such a huge responsibility that goes with being a shepherd. And today's gospel lesson equates the owner of the sheep as being the good shepherd with the hired help. And there's a certain amount of strength that comes from the shepherd because it was a dangerous kind of job. You had to fight wolves, perhaps bears. And the slingshot is a very powerful weapon that takes a certain amount of skill in order to use the sling and to attack with it. But it gives us this imagery here of the good shepherd who owns the sheep, who knows them by name, who cares about each of them. He owns the sheep, and when the wolf attacks, he will stand firm. He will face danger because his priority is the flock. And this is where the image of Christ as the good shepherd comes in because he will not run when adversity happens, he will not turn his back on the flock just because things get tough. This week I had the opportunity to go to a minister's meeting and it was on the health of the church and the health of, of clergy in the post-COVID world in which we are living. And it was a very interesting thing to me to see some of the statistics that were out there and how things have changed in the last few years. And we know that. And some churches have, in fact, grown in the last four years. Some have stayed the same. Some have shrunk. Some have even closed in that amount of time. And maybe we start to wonder as the flock and as God's people where the good shepherd is. Maybe for us it seems like the wolves are gathering at times. But we cannot forget that he is in control and that he knows the sheep. And by knowing Christ, we know the Father. And he is going to reach out and bring us together as God's people under one flock and under one shepherd because that is part of the plan and purpose. And it's easy, I think, to make excuses. It's easy to not go along with something and just kind of shake our hands and say, this is the signs of the time. But I don't believe that God has lost his control. I don't believe that Christ has gone away from us. I believe that Christ knows what's best for his flock because we might not know the story, but like the book of Acts reminds, because Peter and John have come before the Sanhedrin, they're asking, where do you get this authority from? How do you say this stuff? What makes it true? You know, that's one of the things that um, is so important. Anybody can spout off knowledge about anything. And that's what is being questioned here is where is their authority come from? Because I sometimes, uh, most of you probably know my, um, sometimes I can be sort of sarcastic and a lot of times I think I'm funny but I'm probably not. But I love to tell people, you know, um, that uh, everybody's got an opinion about something and that 50% uh, that of the people know this to be true. 
which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's just throwing things out there. And what are we basing things on? Because that's what um, we have to make sure that we are tied into the right thing, that the source comes from God and not from a source that is less than authentic. And see, when they are brought before them, they clearly point back to Jesus is where the power comes from. And they acknowledge Jesus, but also point out that he is the stone that has been rejected and it has become the cornerstone. The cornerstone is the most important stone of the building. It has to be there to be, give it strength. You can't have a stone missing from the foundation and a building be sturdy. In fact, one of the things that you have to make sure is that your foundation is in good repair. And they acknowledge that what they are saying is the truth and it is coming from Christ. And that salvation is found in no one else but through him who is the good shepherd. And it gives this beautiful imagery about the sheep knowing the voice of the shepherd. And how... You know, they know him, and when he calls, they immediately know who it is in that voice. And that's a wonderful thing to behold. You know, nowadays, um, most of us have caller ID, and we know who's calling. We can see it on our phones, but I'm old enough to remember how it was before caller ID and, and sometimes how you might recognize if it was someone in your or family. You know, they would call you by name and you would immediately recognize who it was that was calling you. And that's how it is with Christ. And we as the sheep hear his voice and recognize that voice and it draws us unto him. And that's an important thing to hear those voices of God that is drawing us. And Christ lays down his life for us, for his sheep. And this is by his own accord. The words of Christ here are in red. And this is by his own choice. He lays down his life for us. It is not something that's forced upon him, but that he chooses to do for us. Like sheep, we go astray. Like sheep, Sometimes we escape the sheep pen. I remember um, when I, we first, um, I was a boy, and we first got goats for the first time. And uh, Dad um, built, um, did not realize that um, electric fence um, is not enough to keep in goats. And he he built this beautiful thing, put two strands of electric wire, and we put the goat in there, and five minutes later, the goat was out. And it takes a lot to keep them in, and it's the same way with sheep as well. And don't we, too, strive to leave the pen? The pen is the place of safety, the place of food, the place where we can be a part of that flock. But yet, sin is still a part of our world. It still draws us 
to make the wrong choices. It still draws us to do the wrong things. It still draws us to go away from the flock. But the good shepherd continues to seek us out. The good shepherd continues to lead us, continues to show us how we should go and do and be because he is the son of God and protects us from adversity. But does it mean that things will be perfect? Because what we have to acknowledge as people is when we go out on our own, when we run away from the flock, when we run away from Christ, we might go into the brambles. We might cause pain of ourselves. We might step on ground that is hard. And without the shepherd there to take care of us. Sometimes we question why do these things happen to us? Why do we experience pain? Why do we experience suffering? But in some cases it's because we have removed ourselves from the pen. And once we are stuck in the brambles... Once we are stuck in these briars and things and then we cry out, but the shepherd will still come and find us. The shepherd will still reach out to us. I remember one time as a child picking blackberries down in the woods behind Grandma's house. And... Um, You know, the thing was, I remember there was one that was was beautiful. And it was just out of reach. And it was in there kind of of far. But me, being the smart, intelligent child that I was, you know, um, I thought, well, maybe I can jump and grab it. And so um, I remember leaping up to try to grab it and I missed it but I did find the rest of the briars. (laughs) It was painful. It hurts. And it was not one of my most well thought out plan. But how many times does stuff like that happen to us? We see something that looks appealing. Something that probably in that case all I would have had to have done was ask for help. An adult could have reached it for me. But instead I took it upon my own self to try to leap and reach at the same time and instead of of getting what I desired I found myself into a lot of pain. But that happens to us when we follow our own heart's desire and not what the good shepherd would have of us. But it's a reminder to us that he still loves us. Do you not think that when a sheep gets into the briars and the brambles and gets into trouble, that the shepherd... The same shepherd that will go after and protect from the woods will not climb into the mess to save the sheep. And even the shepherd will cause harm to himself in the process to protect the flock. And so I remind you today to continue to focus upon Jesus Christ. Continue to focus on the fact that he is the shepherd of our lives That if we hear his words and follow his voice, it is a good path. It is a good way to walk in it. It's the way of Jesus and his disciples. 
Because maybe we want to reject him. Maybe the, we don't realize just the importance of that cornerstone in our lives. But it is Jesus that Nazareth is the reason that we build churches. It is the reason that we worship because he is the good shepherd. He is the son of God. He is the author of our faith. And we need to take a step back and allow him to lead us as he should. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for these words of Scripture, for the comfort they bring to us and the fact that they challenge us. Help us to follow your voice. Help us to follow your leading. Help us to hear the words of God and the shepherd and allow us to follow them to goodness and good pastures. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand for our final hymn, number 688, Shepherd Like, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Jesus Christ, in the love of Almighty God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each of you, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.